prophet. We know he was. The Bible said so. Prophet David. Now, for he was a prophet, and he was in the Spirit, and he seen the resurrection. If you'd like to read it, it's in Psalm 16, 8 to 11. He said, Moreover, my flesh was made glad. My, I, I rest in hope. Because you will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. And I'll tell you, his cup got to run it over. Because he's seen, no matter what it was, oh, he's seen the resurrection. And he was really, and his cup run over again. David had another cup running over in Second Samuel. You've got your pencils out. Second Samuel 6.14. There had been a dry spell that took the ark. The enemy had come in and got the ark of the Lord. And they took it down and set it up before Dagon. And Dagon fell on his face and took it to another city. And plagues broke out. That was the hottest thing they ever had on their hands down there. And they couldn't get rid of it because it was out of its place. Now, when they put it on the ox cart and started back. And when David saw the ark coming, you know what he did? He, he got so full, his cup got running over the stimulation when he seen the word being revealed back into Israel again. He danced in the spirit all around, 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 around like that. Yeah, his cup got to running over, you see. Why? He saw the word returning. And I think that would make anybody get a little stimulated when they see after all these years and then the true word by the promise that it would be being brought forth and vindicated. What a time. What a time. Now, let's read. I, I get all talking. I won't get to this. And I have you all here till 1030. I let you out early last night, so I ought to keep you a good long time tonight. Amen. <laughs> no, I was just teasing you. See, I'm, we just want, just as the Lord will lead. Now, and when he had opened the four seal, I heard the voice of the four beasts say, Come see. Now, when the Lamb had opened the fourth seal, let's stop there now, the fourth seal, now who opened it? The Lamb. Was anybody else worthy? No one else could do it. No. The Lamb opened the fourth seal, and um, the fourth beast, the living creature, like an eagle, said to John, Come see what the fourth mystery of the uh, plan of redemption has been hid in this book. Because the Lamb is opening it. In other words, that's what he was saying. There's a fourth mystery here. I showed you in symbol. Now, John, I don't know whether he understood or not, but he wrote down what he saw. But it was a mystery. Amen. So he wrote what he saw. The Lamb was breaking the seals, and God still wasn't going to reveal it. It was left for the last day. Amen. See? Now, we had symbols, and we probed at it, and done very good sometimes, see? But we know it's moved right on. But now in the last days, we can look back and see where it has been. And that is supposed to be done that at the end of the church age, just before the rapture. Amen. How anyone can get the church going through the tribulation, I don't know. But what's it got to go through the tribulation for when it hasn't got, hasn't got a sin? I, mean the, I don't mean the church. The church will go through the tribulation. But I'm talking about the bride. Amen. The bride. No, it hasn't got a sin against it at all. It's done been bleached out. There's not even a uh, not even a smell of it. Nothing left. They're perfect before God. So what's in tribulation to purify them? But the others do. The church does go through the tribulation, but not the bride. Now, now we just took it in all kinds of symbols. Now, like uh, the the church Noah, the carried over type, went on out into sin. See, now they did go over, but Enoch went first. That was the type of the saints that would go in, the, in before the tribulation period. Now we find out this lamb opened the seal. Now the first beast we find, if you notice, the first beast we find was a, oh, the first beast was a lion, the living creature. Found that in the book of the, of the church ages. And then the second beast, I believe, was the, the face of an ox or a calf. And the third beast was the face of a man. But the fourth beast was the face of an eagle. 
Now that's exactly the way we got them, routining, just exactly like that. And that's exactly the way they're even placed in the book here. And that is a great teacher at one time in Florida teaching, saying that, that the, whole, uh, the book of Acts was just merely a, a scaffold work for the, uh, for the church. The church was found in the four Gospels. And we find vice versa from that, that it's the four Gospels that guards the book of Acts. It's from those four Gospels that the book of Acts is written. The Acts of the Holy Spirit in the Apostles. And we find over the book that them guards are sitting there watching, east, north, west, and south. Remember how we draw it out here and how beautifully and perfectly everything hit just to its spot? Now, I want you to notice. Say, come and see. John, I want you to notice again. Before this, now this here is the last of the writers to reveal the working of the Antichrist. Tomorrow night strikes the souls are the altar, the next night the judgments. Next night the going away of this of the end of the age, the end of time of all things. Okay? Once she's taken up therefore, right in that seventh seal there pours out vials and everything else are poured out. What they are I don't know. Notice. But now on this year we find that this fellow here is an eagle, this man that or this uh, living creature that's a... Uh, Poured for here now, or in other words, there's four different ages of it. There was an age of the lion, and uh, we find out this being the fourth age. And he said, "Come and see the fourth mystery of the book of redemption that's been hidden in this book. Come see." And John went to see, and he saw a pale horse, and again the same rider. Upon this pale horse, now he has a name called Death. Now notice, none of the other rider, none of the other horses, or no time that this rider ever rode, they didn't have that man had no name. But now he is called Death. It's not mentioned. He's revealed now what he is, is death. Well, how we can linger on that for a sermon and make it real plain. But anything that's anti, that's against the real, has to be death because there's only two subjects, that's life and death. And that proves that the Holy Spirit's revelation of this in this day is exactly the truth, the anti. He's death. Because the Word, as we'll see later here, is life. Amen. Right? And this man is called death. Now, it was uh, not mentioned of the other times of this writer. But since now, it is mentioned that he's called death. But uh, under the revelation of the line... Now, watch. Now, I want to read this post so I'll be sure I wrote down some place to stand here. Under, not under the revelation of the lion's age or of the first age, the early age, this wasn't revealed. The next age was the age of the ox, which is the dark age, the middle age. It wasn't revealed as what it was. Now, the man-like beast of wisdom, representing the reformers, Luther and Wesley and so forth, it wasn't revealed. But in the eagle age, the last age, the prophetic age, where there is to rise prophetic utterance. See? To whom the secrets always comes. Now that's where we just, we're going to linger on that a little while tonight, so that you'll thoroughly understand now, most times, uh, you realize these, I'm just not speaking to this group here, these tapes go everywhere. Okay? And I must make it clear, because somebody just get one tape. And then if you don't get the rest of them, they're all hung up, see? God has promised this, okay? for this day, for the last ending up of all these different things that's gone on, and being mixed up, 
We are, we've had Elijah's garments, we've had Elijah's robes, oh, there's been people, it's John Alexander Dow is buried up there, wrapped in a, a robe, he said he was Elijah, and we've had all kinds of things like that. What is it? Anyhow, it's only to take away a truth that is going to be presented. Amen. Amen. They had false Christ before Jesus' time. See? They always do that. It's Satan running out of counterfeit to upset the minds and the faith of the people before the thing actually happens. That's all. Didn't Gamaliel say the same thing to the Jews that day? He said, wasn't there a man raised up and professed to be this? And they took 400 out in the wilderness to perish and so forth. said, every branch that my heavenly Father has not planted, Jesus said, it'll be rooted up. Gamaliel said, let them alone. If, they, if it be not of God, when it comes to naught. But if it be of God, you'll be found fighting against God. Amen. The man used wisdom. He was a teacher. Now notice. Now, to wind up all these mysteries, God has promised that there would be a genuine Elisha rise. Some man anointed with that spirit. And it would reveal. He promised it in Malachi 4. I got notes and letters that says that that isn't so, but I'd like to talk to that person. Why, you can't deny it. Any real good theologian knows that's to be the truth. Amen. That they're looking for it. But it'd just be the same way like it come by John, the forerunner of the first time of Christ. Well, they didn't recognize him because there's such great things prophesied of him. Why, he was to make all the high places come low. All the low places go high. All the rough places go smooth. <laughs> oh, he, uh, all the prophets... Isaiah, 712 years before his birth, and Malachi, 400 years before he come on the scene. All those prophesied of him. And then expecting some a corner of heaven to be let out, and this prophet walked right out with his staff in his hand from God. And what happened? A man that you couldn't even show a fellowship card. <laughs> he couldn't show a credential. Stayed out in the wilderness, not even a common school education. We're told by historians that he left to the wilderness when he was nine years old at the death of his father and mother and was raised out. His job was too important to mess with some seminary. Yes. He, had, he had to announce the Messiah. God couldn't use a man all stuffed full of theology. Oh, he can't do it because he'll always drift right back. That's his line of learning. Amen. He drifts back to that. So when he goes to see something, he tries to drift back to what the teachers have said. Be better if you kept waiting on things. And just bleed God. And we find that they missed him. Even the apostles stand there and missed him. Or they said, why does the scripture say, the scribes says that Elias, he said, well, he's already coming. You didn't know him. That's where our pattern of the resurrection or the rapture. It'll go in the... I know that sounds strange, but maybe you'll know a little more after tonight, if the Lord willing, just how it's going to be. It'll be so secret, nobody will know about it hardly. The world will just think this score. I don't like it always did, see? It's the way it always does it. You know, I doubt whether one, one, I say one ninetieth percent of the people on the earth ever know Jesus Christ was here when he was here. You know, when Elijah prophesied, I doubt whether there's hardly anybody know that he was, they know he's a crank up there, some old fanatic, but they hated him. The, what, what they call an oddball. And I think any born-again Christian's kind of an oddball to, to the world because you've been changed. You're from another world. Your spirit's from across the chasm. Amen. And this thing here is such a messed up thing. You're, you're not different. There's something wrong. You, you're still too earthbound. Amen. you got to be uh, heavenly minded. Amen. Heaven lives by the Word. Amen. Now, we notice that this... Uh, this great thing uh, taking place. Now we believe that there is to be a coming of the true spirit of Elijah. It's predicted it would be. See? And we must remember it will be here. In its own season and time, we may be laying a foundation for it now. And it won't be no organization. I, I disagree with a good friend of mine on that. He says there will be a group of people. 
I want you to show me that the Scripture. Amen. God, the unchangeable God, never does change His plans. Amen. If He does, then He isn't God. Amen. That's right.